Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Molly, and for this episode, I'd like to welcome Jane Woodman. Jane is a workplace menopause educator. Jane has spent a significant amount of her career as a human resource manager in the private sector, working for Ford Motor Company, British Airways Interiors Engineering and the United Plastics Group. Jane then moved into academia, teaching on undergraduate and postgraduate programmes, most recently at Swansea University. In 2019, Jane established the Menopause Team with the aim of positively raising menopause awareness. She now spends most of her time on menopause-related work. Thank you so much for joining us, Jane. So to begin with, if it's okay, I'd like to ask you some quick-fire questions just so our listeners can get to know you a little bit better. So what was the last book that you read? I read On Connection by Kay Tempest. Would you recommend it? Definitely. Brilliant. Um, Yeah, I mean, they're a musician and they're so multi-talented. And this is the first piece that I've written by them. And yeah, I would strongly recommend it to to all age groups. What was the last thing that you learned? Well, yesterday um, I received a certificate for a level two qualification in sewing. Oh, really? And do you know what? I thought, oh, I don't, who needs a certificate, you know? And then when it came, I felt quite proud. Yeah, that's a real accomplishment. (laughs) And then I had wanted to become better at sewing, so I had looked for some classes to take, and then, yeah, this one had a qualification attached, which I, as I said, was pretty uninterested in. I just wanted to sew. Oh, that's really nice. (laughs) What is your greatest strength? My greatest strength? That's a difficult one. Maybe trying not to give up. Hmm. Trying to keep moving forward and keep pursuing things that I would like to achieve. And kind of linked to that, what motivates you? Well, this topic actually, that sounds a bit cheesy, doesn't it? But... uh, (laughs) No, actually menopause, that gets me out of bed in the morning because I think that we are lacking in information and education around this topic and it would help all of us if we knew more. So, yeah. That. And lastly on these type of questions, um, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh, I'd like to be a Blue Peter presenter. can honestly yeah. say we've not had that one before. <laughs> And I, and I just feel, why didn't I pursue that more when I was younger? Although I am terrified of heights, so I wouldn't have done the John Noakes bit and got yeah. on with all of that. But um, I think yeah. I think they could have worked around the heights. I think, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for answering those. It's really interesting to know a bit more about you. I do have a few more, but I'll come back to them at the end, if that's okay. So as I mentioned in your bio, you spend most of your time on menopause-related work. And because of that, the theme for this episode is the menopause. The effects of menopause can be physically and emotionally draining and can impact on your day-to-day life, including on your life within the workplace. What are some common misconceptions about menopause in the workplace and how can leaders address them effectively? Okay, so I think the first one is it only happens to women in midlife, but it doesn't. It happens to one in every hundred people before the age of 40. So, and and it happens to one in 20 people between the ages of 41 and 34. So I think that people are very unaware of that and... I mean, I'm not sure if people can see you or know of your age, but I think that you are in your early 20s, yeah, maybe. Yeah, 25. So, um, so you're around my daughter's age, and maybe you wouldn't have thought that your contemporaries or even you could become menopausal. And you could become menopausal naturally, or um, something could happen to you and you might need some surgery and then that would put you into a menopausal state or maybe some of your contemporaries um, experience endometriosis and part of the treatment for that is to be put into temporary menopause. 
So I think a misconception is that it is a female midlife experience. Mm. And it's much broader than that. And, and that's why it's it's really brilliant to be talking about it on this podcast today, because we, we all really need to be aware of how it impacts us. Mm. And the other um, misconception, perhaps, is that it only happens to women. But it actually happens to trans men, intersex, non-binary people. So it's broader than women and it's broader than women in midlife. And mm. That is a really important message, I think. The other one, um, if we're talking about misconceptions, is that menopause begins when you have a hot flush. Mm. And hot flushes are the poster child for menopause and everybody <laughs> identifies with hot flushes and menopause. But actually, only 44% of people are going to experience a hot flush. Oh. So they could be waiting for that hot flush to happen and they could be missing other things that actually are menopause related. Yeah. Um, it also, um, another misconception is that it only happens to half the population. And maybe we could say that, yes, directly, that is the case. But it affects everyone. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So if you're half the population, you're experiencing it directly. The other half are experiencing it indirectly. Mm. Would you like me to go on? I've, I've got a few. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, please yeah. do. Okay. So women think, and people who are generally affected by menopause think that we should just power on through that actually no, we should try and do something about it. And I think that often we see looking after ourselves as maybe an indulgence rather mm. than an investment, that menopause is a time to really invest in yourself and do something about it. And then there is the misconception that menopause shows up for everybody in the same way yeah. and, it, and it does not. So that you can have seven to ten symptoms at any one time, but there are a large amount of symptoms and they mm -hmm. translate very differently for people. And we probably weren't taught about this at school. I knew I wasn't, and maybe you weren't. No. I think it is on the curriculum now, so maybe some of Generation Z will understand it from the school environment. Mm. But there's a big cultural hush, or there has been a cultural hush around menopause, and we didn't learn about it, maybe from our mums or our grandmothers. We're talking about it more now. But often, particularly men, are really shocked to hear that we don't necessarily understand what's happening. Mm. But if you don't talk about it at school, if you don't learn about it at home, yeah. unless you're a specialist degree, where, where are you supposed to learn about yeah. it? So, and in the workplace... Perhaps there's a misconception that menopause has a negative impact on performance. Mm -hmm. And I would really like to stress that that does not have to be the case. There are lots of treatments out there and they, they are very effective treatments. Sometimes they take a little while to maybe work, but most people would benefit from some treatment. But if you don't realise that the symptoms you've got are related to menopause, you don't necessarily seek out yeah. the right so um so yeah those would be my list of misconceptions thank you um despite the menopause being a natural biological transition it often remains kind of a silent topic in the workplace in this regard leaders hold a pivotal role in cultivating environments where menopause is not only acknowledged but also understood and supported so what role can leaders play in promoting awareness and understanding of menopause among their teams so i think in terms of leaders then we might say that leaders set the culture for organizations so if we're developing a culture which enables everybody to be at their best, which is a culture of trust and support, then that is part of the ecosystem which would allow menopause to be part of an authentic conversation, an authentic workplace conversation. They could also encourage an ecosystem, if you like, whereby 
you see posters on the walls describing menopause symptoms, you maybe have a library connected to your work, then books there about menopause or books are in reception about menopause. So uniforms could be tailored so leaders could really encourage these things to be happening as part of an ecosystem. Mm. But then if they themselves were seen and heard to be talking about this, then that would really help as well develop this culture. And maybe they're not necessarily talking about their own menopause um, and maybe they're not going to experience menopause themselves, but maybe they could talk about a program that they watched on television or mm. radio or something they read in the newspaper to generate debate amongst people within their organisation. And then that is also part of education and awareness. And if we could have education and training for all, then that that would really help as well. Really good quality evidence-based education for all. They could oversee important policy development and not just policies that were made and then you know, left on the shelf, but policies that were alive within the organisation. Mm. Um, maybe things like health benefits, um, they could encourage uh, better health benefits for those that are affected by menopause. And also they could maybe even attend some of the support networks that could happen in organisations. So some organisations have menopause cafes mm -hmm. and perhaps they could engage with those there are schemes whereby you could train menopause buddies and menopause champions. And if leaders could oversee and be questioning in those scenarios as well, then I think that would really help. It's also about encouraging representation, representation across the organisation of potentially people who are affected by menopause and to have their voices enabled in terms of people hearing about their stories. So leaders have a pivotal role, really, in terms of cementing a culture of trust for support that will allow this to flourish. How can leaders ensure that menopause-related issues are included in diversity and inclusion initiatives within their organisations? I know you just mentioned um, getting involved in policy and things like uniform, um, but do you have any other examples? Well, yeah. So I, I think that this this is difficult maybe for people to understand that menopause is an equality, diversity and inclusion issue. And often when I speak to people, it, it isn't on the agenda of their equality, diversity and inclusion committee or, or whatever they call it. So ensuring that menopause is actually discussed in those environments is, is really significant. Mm. And then ensuring back to the education that it's actually not just that menopause is part of the meetings and the discussions, but that is part of the training around diversity, inclusion and equality. And I think an interesting thing would be in terms of setting the tone for an organisation, if leaders could ensure that at induction, menopause was mentioned and mm. how the organisation manages menopause and responds, then I think that would really help people who are going to experience this feel as if this organisation cares, this organisation will want to support me and mm. that they are embracing equality, diversity and inclusion. Um, and it's about using inclusive language, mm -hmm. um, you know, translating information. So I think as part of leadership, it's about being curious and about questioning and that's what we need in the context of menopause. We need leaders to be questioning and particularly around diversity and inclusion. And now we've spoken about what changes leaders can advocate for in their own organisations, but what role can leaders play in advocating for broader societal changes to better support women experiencing menopause in all aspects of their lives, including the workplace? So I think that public advocacy is, is really important. 
Auckland if they could use any platform that they're on to be talking about menopause. So, for example, I think quite a few leaders probably are on governing bodies of schools. Mm -hmm. And so within that role, they could be talking about menopause in that context. And they could be talking about it in terms of support for teachers, but also what do the pupils need to understand? So that, that's just an example. But I think any platform that a leader is on, whether it be in a sports club, whether it be like me in a sewing group, you mm -hmm. know, just bring this topic up um, and get people's views and then just start the conversation. Mention yeah. things that you've been involved with, that, that's TV and radio, as we mentioned previously. And, and I think that could really help. And then, again, depending on their roles, but it could be about broader policy influence. So they could leverage their positions to influence policy, even maybe in a local or national government context. Yeah. And they could support and, and possibly even contribute funds towards educational in initiatives within communities, advocate for research, so maybe link with universities and encourage perhaps research into menopause in that context whether that be linked to their workplaces or whether it be linked to maybe volunteer organisations that they're part of. Because menopause will be impacting not just the workplace, mm -hmm. but will be impacting organisations that they engage with outside as well. Um, and definitely to lobby for better healthcare and, and generally support cultural change. You know, we... we are making improvements in this area and the very fact that you and I are talking about this today yeah. on an Academy Rose podcast is wonderful and I'm not even sure if this would happen five years ago so this this is very positive but we all need to play our part in moving this forward even further so that nobody feels disadvantaged because currently one in ten women are leaving work every year because of menopause Wow. And that can't keep happening. I mean, great, if you want to leave work, that's that's fine. But not because of menopause, because there are so many solutions out there. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think leaders can make changes within the, their organisations, but also there's an important societal role here in terms of advocacy as well. Mm. And just lastly, do you have any menopause-related advice for leaders? Don't be afraid to talk about it. I, do, I think there is a lot of fear of upsetting people, but really people do want to talk about it. And so if leaders can be part of that conversation, then it, it would be really helpful. The other thing is not to single out middle-aged women. Mm -hmm. As we've said, the situation is much broader. So when we're talking about this, when we're recommending things, we're recommending and talking about it too anybody and everybody so yeah I, I suggest that leaders just take a deep breath and talk about it thank you so much for all your stories and ideas and advice today um just before we end i'd like to come back to a quick a uh, few more quick fire questions if that's okay so do you or have you ever played a musical instrument oh this is a tragedy in my life i set myself a challenge that by the age of 40 I would play the saxophone. I have a saxophone. I am 56 and I can't play it. Well I mean you set yourself up quite broad there because you didn't say you had to play it well. I feel like as long as you've played it at least once I feel like you, <laughs> you've, already, you've already done that, you've accomplished it. Thank you. And maybe as time goes on and I become more accomplished with sewing, I will return to the saxophone. Yes, and, yeah, and maybe. <laughs> what is your favourite type of food? Um, I love um, Thai food. Mm. I was thrilled to see that a second giggling squid has opened in Cardiff. So, yes. Uh, I walked past it this weekend and I was, I was excited about that. Oh, yes, that. 
What's your favourite noise? My daughter's key in the door and then when she says hello. Oh. Are you a morning person or a night owl? I'm probably a morning person on balance. Oh, okay. And lastly, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? What would it be? The ability to transform the menopause education situation that um, everybody would be educated. One that would benefit us all. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the experience. Oh, it's been super, Molly. Thank you very much. It's lovely to meet you and um, hope to see you again soon. Mae un podlediad sgwrsiau ar arweinyddiaeth ar gael trwy ein gwefan. Mae'r hawlfraint y podlediad yma yn cael ei gadw gan Llywodraeth Cymru. Our Conversations on Leadership podcast is available through our website. Copyright of this podcast is held by the Welsh Government.